And welcome back, everybody. Another week by and another week survived. Saturday night once again, here in all our glory as a generation. So how was everybody's week so far? You survived, obviously, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And made it. We're all around, we're all alive, and we are here enjoying ourselves, I tell you. It's been another crazy week with the gong show everywhere. You turn on anything, and it's a complete freak show in the world. So come by, sit down, and let's have a little sanity. Nothing too strenuous. Some more memories, some laughs, maybe a story or two. And oh yes, always, 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 it all centers around us. Because we ain't forgotten. We know who we are. We know where we've been. And oh yeah, I like to talk about ourselves a little bit now and again now. I think that happens when you cross that certain age. You start enjoying discussing things and talking about yourself. Having the memories digging up the past, enjoying the fact that there wasn't cameras and camcorders and smartphones everywhere to lock in on all the stupid stuff we used to do. All them things that could have held you back or landed you at tickets or fines or just a regular old beating by somebody who caught you doing something extremely stupid. But no, not us. We're too glorious. Although sometimes you get remembering something and you go, you know, I completely forgot about that. I was sitting here this week and somebody had mentioned something about our era and our twisted sense of humor of our generation and how dark it really got. And they said, do you remember the fad of all the dead baby jokes? I had completely forgotten about that. Now, I don't know if that went on absolutely everywhere, but oh yeah, I do remember there was a while where it was, I was the craze telling dead baby jokes. I mean, did anybody, did you guys have those? Was that a thing for a while where you were? Oh, they were, oh, they were brutal. And so I went back and I remembered a couple of them. And Man, so I told a couple of them the other day here in the house. And I, I can't believe you'd never get away with that now. You you told a you told a dead baby joke today and you'd get lynched. People would be crazy. You know, ye ho ye. <laughs> Oh yes, the tasteless humor joke books. They were great. I used to love them because they were, they were usually in bathrooms, in the magazine rack by the toilet or in a basket on the back of the toilet tank. Usually tasteless jokes, all sorts of things like, but you, you couldn't have that now. That would be no. <laughs> very much so. You don't see that anywhere anymore, and I miss it. I, you know, go to someone's house and use a washroom. I want to see a book of tasteless jokes. Or the one I had, someone actually got me one time. It was this tiny little book. It was no, no bigger than like a pack of cigarettes, and it was a thousand and one absolutely useless facts that everybody should know. And I studied that thing, tried to remember it as best as I could, so I'd be full of these thousand useless facts. Things that most people probably didn't know. You think I can remember any of them now? No. They all disappeared. Now, that's too bad. But as you can see, I took on a new hobby this week by drafting an unofficial Generation X constitution. I did the video, and it was originally nine articles in the constitution. Now it's 12. Two of them are long. Two of them have five sections apiece. 
One involves the rules and the rights of using the middle finger. That was suggested. The tenth one that I added was uh, an unedited, as it was written out in the comments, suggestion for one, which I thought was quite good, so I added it. I want to get this thing done, and I've been looking for somewhere where I can get a good poster printed of it so I can have that thing on the wall behind me. The Generation X, the unofficial Generation X constitution behind me. Which other people should know. If you're going to mess around or hang out or talk to or have dealings with anybody of our people, you should understand the basic rules that we govern ourselves by. That was the idea behind it. I, and it seems to be, I, I like it, almost finished. Working on it, getting it going, just about done. Now, where do we go? You know, we had mentioned last week about remembering the things they tell us as a kid that were lies. And I, and I asked somebody, I said, you remember the stuff they used to feed us as, as a kids that we believed, you know, not just the, you know, making faces with your hands and, you know, then stop doing that or they're going to stay that way. No, it was various other things. Well, one of them they said is everything they told us that kids made me believe that every single person I ran to on the street was going to try and give me drugs. That never happened. Shit, that never happened until I was like 30 and I was walking down the street in the city one time and I swear every second car that pulled up to me was trying to give me free crack. Because they're, you know, oh man, we'll give you some now and just call us if you want more. I'm like, do I look like I scratch my skin off? Do I look like I got burnt lips from sucking a glass pipe? Like, give it up, guys. Not my thing. So how went the week? Where was everybody? What'd you do? Did you avoid the gong show of the world? Not turn on the news every day and watch the goofy stuff that goes on? That is the one thing, the best part about being specifically of our people. Since they don't pay us no mind, we don't have to pay them no mind. And we get to miss out on a lot of that crap that they get going. Discussing their shit. <laughs> going loony. Everybody freaking out on all their shows. It's the same with my, my email gets loaded now with other people here from YouTube trying to sell me a package that'll make my channel explode. There's just dozens of people. That's all they want to do. Sell crap now. Scams everywhere. They haven't changed. You think maybe if they learned a little thing, read a book, dug out of the digital age, they would realize that they're not doing anything new. We've seen all this before, but it was done through newspapers, little tiny classified ads that said, make money stuffing envelopes at home. You ever answer those things just because you wanted to know what the scam was and the only way to know was to answer them? I answered to stuff the envelopes one, get paid to stuff envelopes. And you have to send a self-addressed, already stamped envelope with a couple dollars. And what they send you is like five different versions of an ad that you photocopy and then stuff. And you put an ad telling people how they can make money stuffing envelopes. And they send you a $2 and a self-addressed stamped envelope. And then you put these things in and send them back to them. I thought that was the greatest scam ever. I wonder... The first guy that did that actually made the money. Can't do it now. We're sitting here. And get back to the, these dead baby jokes. They were brutal. It was extremely dark. I don't think anybody has as dark a sense of humor as we had. And that we still do. 
because nobody else will laugh at themselves like we do, ever. We're the generation that will absolutely go crazy laughing at ourselves. Even if it's something that's not supposed to be funny. It can be real pain and trauma, and we will laugh. That's how we deal. You know, you cut yourself, rub some dirt in it, get going. Oh, you think that hurts? You know, oh, you cut off a finger, that don't hurt. Remember when Johnny down the street cut off his hand? Walk it off, rub some dirt in it. Oh, you broke your leg? Walk it off, you'll be okay. We didn't worry. I know, little babble babble. It's a little crazy. I had something set and I totally caught myself absolutely off guard today. Completely. You know. I was even going through some of the weird ass news stories from our time. Like the strangest things that you would ever see. And some of them were completely nuts. You know, like, absolutely insane. Where is it here? Look at this one here. Like, 1988, January 1988, there was this British family, you know, obviously over in England, were so engrossed in the TV show that they were watching, you know, were such huge fans of the show, of St. Elsewhere. You remember St. Elsewhere? They were such huge fans of the show that even after their house caught on fire and started burning around them, they refused to leave the house because they didn't want to miss the show. The firemen actually had to come and pull them out of the house. And then when they got the fire put out, the house was still standing and the TV still worked. So they ran back inside so they could catch the end of the show. You know, crazy. <laughs> that is true, fans. Absolutely. I mean, the house is burning down around you and you're not going to leave. I mean, I remember watching St. Elsewhere and I don't remember it being that good. Yes, walk it off was always in the vocabulary. You got that right, Pike. Walk it off. Absolutely. You couldn't sit back. You just walk it off. You can still breathe. You know, I remember one time I fell out of a tree. It was about seven feet down, hit the ground, knocked the wind out of me, something fierce. And I was gasping for breath. And I, I couldn't do much. And I, I, I sat there and my dad come over. And he's just sit there and he just kind of shoved me with his foot. And he's like, there's nothing wrong with you. He's like, you just got to catch your breath. I'm like, hot damn. Howie Mandel. a oh, poor guy. I couldn't be as germaphobic as him. <laughs> no way. And. It, I came across another one. You know, we talked now and they got all this, all this stuff and you can't say certain things anymore. And everyone's, you know, we thought we had politically correctness in our time and they've gone overboard with it now. I, I don't remember. Was he on there, PJ? It's been so long since I watched the show. I would not remember that. But then again, I, you know, watch Dallas and Dynasty too, because those are all the big shows at the time. I think, I don't think anybody ever missed an episode of Dallas. But man, I couldn't tell you who was in it at the time. But you, you. <laughs> yes, the phrase that will teach you. One, one that always got said around my house was, and what did we just learn? We had an old stereo cabinet, okay? And I just gotten my first CD player 
And I went to pull out the turntable because it didn't work anymore. And I was going to mount the CD player in the stereo cabinet. It had the two doors on the front and the shelf would slide the turntable out for putting the records on and off. And I was going to take out the turntable and wire in the CD player. And I had it set and I was getting in there and I was ready to cut the power cord for the turntable. The old man is sitting there and he's like, make sure you're doing it right. And I said, everything is fine. And he's like, well, what about the power? And I just, you know, I'm young, but I think I know what I'm doing. I got out. He's like, make sure the power's up. And I stuck my head out of the cabinet and I went, I pushed the button. I said, that is power on. That is power off. That is power on. That is power off. I know what I'm doing, which is usually followed by call an ambulance when someone says, trust me, I know what I'm doing. So I got back in there with the pliers and I cut the wire. Of course, it's plugged in. The wire was still live. The bright flash and the bang when them pliers cut through that wire. Holy shit. Yeah, I didn't get burnt. I didn't get shocked. I whacked my head. But I'll tell you, that old, the old man sat there and was going to let me essentially electrocute myself to learn a lesson. You know. <laughs> You know, it's essentially, he's like, well, if he lives, he'll learn something. If he doesn't, oh, well. You know, like. And that worked. It, I, I tell you, after that, I never, ever, ever forgot to unplug something, kill a breaker. You know, like, never, ever again did I ever miss. And the first day I started working construction, I always had bolt testers and the check live wires and plug testers with me because after that I never trusted electricity at all if anybody told me anything because I couldn't even tell myself correctly about it. What kind of shit show is that? Oh. But as I was mentioned with the Crazy stories about how we had politically correctness in our time and how it's super overboard now. Oh. And it has to do with bus stops, okay? In March 1985, in St. Louis. I don't know if anybody is from St. Louis and remember this, but they decided... To stop calling bus stops bus stops because they said it conveyed too negative of an image. So they installed 1,800 new signs for the bus stops that called them bus starts instead of bus stops. Because they figured the positivity of the sign would attract more riders to the bus system. I bet you any money that didn't work out. But it lasted for like a year and a half. And that they determined that everybody was just confuted, but confused by the wording. And it didn't make a difference at all. You know. But now I see. We got the big question about music. Well, now, what do you have there? Question for all Gen Xers here. Today's music. You know, I'm going to hop in on that. And I'm going to say, yeah, today's music is too much. Way too manufactured, 100%. Convoluted. I mean... Everything now is so fine-tuned and auto-tuned. Everybody here could be a star. We could all have perfect pitch singing voices. No problem. So you wouldn't have an issue. I, I think what's happened with the music today is you don't have raw talent very often anymore. You know, it used to be that you had to have Real, real talent and natural showmanship to actually make it and go somewhere. And now you don't. You know, and, and the difference is, I mean, 
If you were doing music today, though, success would be measured differently, too. I mean, I guarantee there are bands out there that have probably never even sold an album in North America or, you know, let alone within the U.S., but in North America, but due to the Internet, could be very popular somewhere else and are actually making a living and a career out of it. I mean, I know many bands that can't get even a tour in bars around here, but they go over to Europe every year and tour. So when it, when it comes to that, the idea of what is success in music, I think, has changed. But the stuff that is, I, I don't like it. Too manufactured, overproduced, artificial. Everything is absolutely timed. And I mean, geez, even their press conferences and press releases and album releases and everything is also manufactured. Well, I would have to say a lot of them are because it's the same problem today as it is with a lot of industries. And when they get on into all them stupid reality shows and stuff, and they artificially manufacture these stars in such a short time, they don't have, they don't have that experience of starting in a band, grinding it out, being in two or three garage bands, maybe playing in a pub or two or a bar here and there, you know, trying to record your own demo, trying to get out there, trying to play a little more, renting a school auditorium yourself to put on your own show, which, by the way, can always go wrong if things get measured out the wrong way. No, and I think... Uh, oh, <laughs> Ah, Robert. <laughs> Forced them to listen to the hair metal. All day. There you go. Ab absolutely. Why not? Give them into some music that's really good. There's actually one one band that is today. Teshner to mention it for you. I don't know if they're still doing the last couple years, but they've been around so long. And... They, they never made it. And then finally they started to catch ground and they've never changed. They're exactly the way they would have, they were when they were in different bands in, in the eighties and early nineties. And they're called stop, stop. And they are, man, they are absolutely wild. They're good music. And I first found them about six years ago and their stuff was just like when I was a teenager. They did not change the way their music. They stuck to what they wanted to do all these years and then finally found some success. Oh, it's, it's completely different in talent levels. Rat. Oh. Did you start with their first album out of the basement or did you just have some random songs on the playlist there, Robert? Yeah, see, PJ, right there, that's one of the problems. Concerts canceled because laptops are missing. I, I mean, you don't have bands do anything like that anymore. Oh, yes. Um, God, when it comes to that, I have to say, one of the absolute most talented musicians out there was probably Prince. He, he wrote and composed and played every single instrument when he was recording. I, I mean, it had to have been tough to go on tour with him because he would sit there and there wasn't anybody else that ever wrote any of his stuff. You know, it was absolutely crazy. Same here, Robert. 
I, I think for the first year and a half that we had our band in high school, the only group we ever played in front of was on the weekends at parties for our own friends in front of the same eight people all the time until once in a while we get somebody else to come along. <laughs> you had to earn it even amongst your friends. You know, and you guys sit there and just jam sessions all the time. Drums were in the living room. The amps were always set up. You know, it was always something going on. We tried. We had fun. All we wanted to do at one point was to get a, enough together that we could have a tour in the summer and just get enough money to get us from a one bar to the next. You know. I think that comes from having to earn it on the hard road, Teshner. You know, art, artists and fans of the past. I mean, there's no fans that were more committed than those that followed the, the Grateful Dead around. I mean, I think they, pretty much every concert was the same people over and over again. You, you know, but it's it's crazy. I mean, I play a little. I was never very good. Never, ever very good. So the guys I played with, they would sit there and they would have me and I would have a little little rhythm piece on the with the guitar and that was it. You know. <laughs> but your sister was a deadhead. And I don't understand why the hell it was that he had people just follow him around like crazy. I I I just I don't get it. It was nuts. It was like People just spend their entire life just following them around from show to show. Yeah, yeah, Robert, you're probably right. And that's probably it was it. Little, little good acid. Not like the brown at the original Woodstock. Stay away from it. The brown acid is bad. But it was probably the good stuff. But hell, what do you, what do you do? Not much. They can't can't do a whole lot about that. Oh, it's it's a Grateful Dead concert, most definitely. Most definitely there were some drugs at a Grateful Dead concert. In fact, I don't think I've ever been to a concert where there wasn't any of some kind. You well, know, you'd see people zoned out all the time. You know. <laughs> It, yeah. Well, what what was the one who that they casually dubbed their one what the bloody ear tour because they were so loud they caused some people's ears to bleed. The one year, like that is crazy. You don't have things like that anymore, and bands don't put on. You don't see really good shows you don't it's just not the same but at the same time they used to make more money on tour than they did selling albums like they made a lot of money on on tours shit in 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 the 70s that's how most bands made their money You know, it was the tours. It wasn't album sales. Not like now. And and now also, it bugs me that most of the artists that are in the top don't write their own songs so much that they, you know, other people write them. And they're, they're just a stage performer. You know, they, they make their money. Well, Robert, you know what the thing I love the most? Iron Maiden is my absolute all-time favorite band. 100%. Nobody above them as far as I'm concerned. And they're, they're phenomenal. But the one thing I like about them the most is their songs live are exactly how they are on the album. 
They don't add extra stuff. And then um, when, oh, geez, when what's his name left and came back, instead of getting rid of a guitar player, they changed the songs to have three guitars. That, that is absolute. Well, all live is a little faster. Uh, that can't be helped. But, I mean, they're phenomenal. They're, they're absolutely amazing. And the fact that you watch them now and Bruce can still motor around on that stage and belt out like he always has. I mean, he's got to be the, the oldest rocker in the best shape. I mean, he definitely ain't the oldest rocker still out there, but he's got to be the one in the absolute best shape. And kudos that he flies the plane, old Ed Force One as they dubbed it, you know, <laughs> oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Dog catcher. And they fly their plane. You, you can't, uh, you can't fault them for that at all. That is phenomenal stuff. It don't get no better than that when it comes to it. And I don't think people put in the effort today that they used to when it comes to the music. You don't have to have the same talent anymore either. I mean, you don't have to have the same amount of talent for a lot of things. I mean, look at this. Any idiot can sit out. I can drop down here. Microphone, camera. Talk some shit. Put on a video. Make a dollar. Anybody can, it's, things have gotten much easier to access. But that does help when you have the wider world in one time. That is the one thing I do like about the new technology. As much as I'd rather see most things go analog or have some analog backup. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm kind of on the fence, the whole Taylor Swift thing. No effects can't make crappy playing good, but sometimes crappy playing can make you famous. Look at the Ramones. Come on. Nothing they do is more than two or three chords, and it's just absolutely easy. You know? Oh, she, Tesher, I agree. She's, she's all about the business. She's a hardcore performer, but, uh, and Robert is right. That doesn't, that doesn't hurt her none. You know, come on, seriously. There aren't many very fugly, fuddly looking people that make it huge in the, in the music world. Except when you get back in like the hair metal and the heavy metal days of our time, because I mean, I mean, shit, look at Motley Crue and, and you had what, and then Skid Row and, and all that, you know, they weren't all about the makeup. They were all about the hardcore partying. You know, I always wondered just how huge Guns N' Roses would have got in the end if Axel wasn't always such a dick. You know, it was good to see he finally grew up. I think he just finally was broke, but he can still kind of sing. You know, he can still kind of sing, but at least, you know, I think he'll walk away when he can't sing. Unlike Vince Neil, my God, he's got to stop trying to sing anymore. He can't. The crew is done. They should have been done six, seven years ago. Was he, is that what you think happened back to our PJ? That he, he went on some antidepressants, smartened himself up, got properly medicated. Stop diving into crowds to take somebody's camera away.
I remember one night going to a, a going to a GNR show, and it was late. It'd been about two hours, and they still hadn't opened the doors. And people are saying that Axel's running late. The plane is just about to land, and we waited and we waited. And then about eleven thirty, eleven forty-five at night, they said they were going to make another announcement in five minutes. And I looked at my friends and I said, "Let's start getting out of here now, because this is going to go to shit." They're going to announce that Axel is not coming. And that the concert is canceled. And you don't do that when you got 16,000 people standing outside the arena waiting to get in to go see a concert. That's what they did. And sure as shit, you know, all hell broke loose. That was just, it was, it was an absolute shit show. <laughs> yeah catcher you're right vince has to give it up i mean i've heard nonsense that they've been planning on actually doing another tour but and then i've heard that they were going to dump vince and get a somebody else to sing i don't know it was time to hang it up a man's got to know when to walk away you know 100 percent. they have to know when to walk away now, the, the ACDC thing within the middle of the tour, Brian Johnson having to bow out and, and Axel taking his place, that was kind of a different story. And I think it only worked because people were interested to see Axel back on stage because they were still getting ready for that Guns N' Roses reunion. I think that's partly why that worked. Where you are, Robert? Oh, nice. Are foreigners still going around? Really? See, sometimes I'm surprised that I'll see an announcement of a concert and I'll be like, they're still touring? You know, and they'll have a date here and there. And there, there's many that should have stopped ages ago. And then there's some that if they can still play and haven't been together for 10 years, I'd like to see step up and get back together. You know, they're, they're all going to keep going and it's going to wind up being the Rockers with Walkers Music Festival is going to be what's coming next. Oh, they went and got themselves a new lead. Ah, see, that figures. I'm, I'm always on the fence about that. You know, I, I know like, of course, ACDC, you know, Brian Johnson came in after Bon Scott died. Um, um, look at Bruce Dickinson. I mean, he wasn't on the first two albums with Iron Maiden either. In fact, he's famously said that he went and actually was a fan and actually went and seen them in concert one time and said that he should be singing for them because he's better than the other guy. A couple years later, he wound up being their lead singer. It, it happens. But if a band's been around, you know, more than a decade, I don't think you should be replacing your lead singer. I haven't. I haven't heard anything. Uh. Yeah, there's another one, you know, Robert, that's, that's another one. A lot of guys, you know, took over with the band on that after the first or second album and, and that's okay. But if a band's been around for like 10 years, you don't just up and replace the lead singer. I, you can't, it's, it's not the same. I mean, shit, you think the Rolling Stones would have ever kept going if in the last 25 years Mick Jagger had kicked it? I doubt it. Because Keith Richards would have crawled into the biggest bottle of Jack Daniels there is, and that man's going to live forever. And I don't think Ozzy will ever do anything ever again. I don't think he even knows who he is anymore. Or what his own name is. I mean, I've heard that he's 
actually have some major problems. <laughs> He's looked that way for a long time, though. I mean, but I, I don't think he could do anything now. I mean, one, I mean, shit. He's been at it for, what, almost 50 years? Like when, when did Black Sabbath form? Like he's been, it's way too long. You can't keep it going. You, you can't, you can't live like that. You can't rock like that. The, and when it comes to Ozzy, the fact that that man is alive and made it even through the eighties is phenomenal. I mean, you go biting the head off the bat and having to go through the rabies shots. And at that time, those are the ones that went into the stomach. Those were painful. You know, snorting red ants off live red ants off a table. Like the shit that he should not be alive. You know, the fact Sharon never killed him when she would wake up in the middle of the night and he's standing on the bed pissing on her. He never should have been alive this long. It's absolutely, completely, utterly insane. Yeah. Well, you can't say what you want about Ozzy, even when he, he, you didn't sound like he could talk or even mumble, but you put him on stage and stick a microphone in front of him and he sounds great. I don't know what it would be like now. You know, like, you know, I could see possibly, possibly if they could arrange it that he would, you know, show up somewhere and maybe do a song. But I would never expect any more out of him than that. And they'd have to pick the right one. <laughs> Ah, uh, Jay. You can just hear that, can't you, from when they had that their goofy TV show? Oh. Man, I couldn't stand watching that thing, and yet I did. You, you, you can't look away from a train wreck, even when you know it's absolute garbage. That's, that's a problem. You can't look away from a train wreck. Everybody's got to look. See the body in the pile. It uh, couldn't do it, not with that type of stuff anymore. No way in hell. <laughs> I'd hire a man suit to walk around on stage. Yeah, I bet you. <laughs> there ain't nothing real about reality TV. I haven't had actual um, over-the-air TV or cable TV or anything in probably 15 years. I, I just can't do it. And as much as you try, you can't avoid the stuff. Doctor's office, it's on the wall. You go to a restaurant, they got one on the wall. So you, no matter what, you, you're still going to see it. Damn. It's it's absolutely crazy. You can't avoid the tra you can't avoid TV, even though all TV is trash. Yeah, it, it gets to be a bit much. It's actually freeing to cut it off again, you know. Sometimes I even think, oh, no internet, but I, I do find the internet for work actually helpful. Like it, it saves a lot of time when I'm bidding jobs and invoicing and, you know, order supplies. You know, Jay, I agree a hundred percent. They absolutely, absolutely do lack any substance. 
There are not many of them are very good. I find the odd one entertaining, but for the most part, no. <laughs> ah, nice, Robert. One of my go-tos is uh, married with children when going to sleep. I, I can I can listen to Al and his babble all day long. Well, one of my favorite phrases, and I use it here every now and then. <laughs> and the little woman's like, "Did you miss me?" I'm just like Al Bundy. You know, when Peg says, "Did you miss me?" and he's like, "With every bullet so far." You got to enjoy. And the the old I Love Lucy show was great, except I did not like her. <laughs> Six touchdowns in one game. I've looked and looked for an Al Bundy jersey. I wouldn't mind getting one. A poke high. Six touchdowns, one game. Those those were good. And I loved all his jokes at the shoe store. <laughs> it is. It's, uh, especially when it came to stuff at the shoe store. And some of the jokes they, they did. Like there's one when the neighbor when there's one when the neighbor had a Kelly poster on the wall. There there's one episode where the neighbor lady, Marcy is out somewhere and someone walks up to her and says, hey, didn't you used to be Bruce Jenner? And that was back then. So no one's going to say that anything later was a surprise. <laughs> and he's always making fun of Marcy. Always calling her a chicken. Making her sound like she's a, a young boy somewhere, you know. Those those were great. I I liked them. And poor Bud in all his damn costumes trying to pick up women. It was a different thing. Every season he there was uh, something else. He was a sad sad little man, but somehow always managed to get one in the end. Okay, Jay, I haven't seen what <laughs> is his DJ name, Grandmaster B. <laughs> Jay, I have no idea what Brooke Shields looks like now. Now, are you saying Bruce Jenner actually looks like Brooke Shields now? Like today, they both look the same? Because I know darn well that there's no way it looks like Brooke Shields did back in the day. Are you kidding? I still like looking at the cover of the Blue Lagoon movie. <laughs> There's no way that Jenner looks like that. I wonder if after that was all done, if they just sat there and said, no, no more, uh, no more royalties for things because you're not that person anymore. I wonder if anybody's ever thought of that. You sign a contract and then they go and do one of these things, have a surgery and have their name changed. They're no longer legally not the same person that signed the contract. So they're no longer going to get paid. I do know there was a case like that for when it came to a divorce. Some guy transitioned over actually had a legal name change and all sorts of legal changes and then could not get divorced in order to get remarried because they were no longer legally the same person that originally married, but they couldn't get married because they were legally married. Like it was such a convoluted thing in the law. It, yeah. Logic and common sense are canceled these days. It's it's they're gone. Bye-bye, out the window. 
you know, definitely one flew over the cuckoo's nest on that one. Absolutely crazy. Can we have, do you think there's ever a chance of logic and common sense ever making a comeback? Or is it completely wiped out? Hmm. I think you may be right on that. We may very well be. But you have to try. You can pound a little common sense into somebody somewhere. I think one of the issues is, is we don't get them knock people upside the head anymore when they're being stupid. You know. Yeah, that they don't. The malls aren't malls anymore. Any Anywhere I go now, malls are mostly just walking places for the elderly. So I, I guess that's where I'll be walking one day when it's raining or cool outside. Walk into the mall. Or if it's really hot outside, go walk into the mall. You know, you get to that point. They just, they're no good. Even, even the food courts are horrible now. Yeah, Robert, there's still malls here and there. The odd one. <laughs> Shit, I think they're actually still building the odd one. And I have no idea why. I just figured everything now is just strip malls and big box stores and damn infill. You know? I mean, why would you go to a mall anymore when you can get a, it's the same experience going to a Walmart? Want to wander around with a bunch of zoned out aimless people that uh, don't know red from blue and still eat crayons and sniff glue? And Yeah, I've never had a very big image of like, I refused until I was in my 30s to ever set foot. I was, I was well into my 30s before I ever set foot in a Walmart. I couldn't do it. Because every time I thought of a Walmart, all I ever thought of was the little five foot six guy that weighed 90 pounds with the mullet and the wife beater with the pizza stain on it from the night before walking around in one flip flop with three little kids beside him and a big woman that was a foot taller than him, about 300 pounds and a baby on her arm barefoot wearing stirruped stretch pants and a way too tight shirt for her size and that's what i always figured was walmart customers so i spent so long never ever going into a walmart because i just couldn't take myself to go into one and then i went and i thought okay they're not all that bad and then someone started posting pictures and videos of the people of walmart and that just solidified it again for me so I spend most of my time avoiding them. <laughs> the glue's not as good as it used to be. Are you sure? Like that, that, the Elmer's white glue isn't as good anymore. Or that uh, clear glue that came in like the little brown bottle with the rubber top that had the slit on it that you would smear. None of that is as good anymore. Or do they even sell these things anymore? Shit, I'm surprised glue isn't uh, locked up anymore. Modeling glue. I could definitely see it not being as good anymore. I mean, don't isn't isn't it now they try and just pitch it off as some super watered down contact cement now? The modeling glue. Like I remember it being really good. And then the last time I did, it was like this really super watered stuff with a brush and it just didn't work. But I haven't done a model in so long now. You know. 
you know, I never would have thought the Walton brothers had actually gone to university. When you hear their story, they make it sound more like they were these guys that kind of took a chance and got lucky. Which probably is not the way it actually happened. I just want to give a little little mention here on this because I'm still working away on it to spill it out here on my lovely unofficial Gen X constitution. Article 12, without reading all the sections, just the main reference to it is we, we reserve the, we Gen X recognizes the inalienable right to indifference regarding, regarding your feelings. So I included one in there where we don't have to care about your feelings. So don't come crying to me about how something made you upset that somebody else did on some other town, on some other show, or in a news article or news report you saw. Uh, we don't have to care about your feelings. I, I haven't built a model in ages. The last one I ever built was a massive and uh it was a a giant model of a battleship <laughs> i'm working on it and then i'm going to do a thing where i a video where i read out the whole thing i know the other one i wanted to try and make it longer cuz i know there's some that said don't watch any video under 10 minutes and I'm like, but I can't really stretch it out. Um, but I'm working on it and it's going to be better. Now I'm trying to find a place I can get a poster made to get it printed that I said earlier so I can have it hanging on the wall behind me. And I, I've tried to find a couple places and so far they, they can't fit the print on the poster. And then the one that did, they're like trying to charge me like, a hundred dollars, hundred twenty-five dollars to print a freaking poster. I mean, I get the first one's always more expensive, but so I'm gonna go check. Got a local printer place here. I'm gonna go check local people. So it'd probably be cheaper, and then I can probably get it on a hardback board so I can tack it up to the wall. But uh, I'm actually having a lot of fun working on that thing it's uh it's kind of become my pet project in the office here working on the gen x constitution we'll see i'll get it going it'll be it'll be something go stand up at an actual podium when i do the final reading I was going to see if the local church had let me stand at the podium and put a backdrop behind me so I blocked that out so I can sit there at the pulpit and shake my fist and yell and talk about the Gen X Constitution. Have some fun with it. Because it's about all we can do now. I'm going to enjoy things. Now look into the fact that going 48, uh, too close to 50. And yet, I still feel like I'm in my 20s most days. Until I try and get up out of bed and start walking, then I I no longer feel that way. But I mean, in my head, most days I'm still going to think that I'm like easily in my 20s and can still do all the same stuff that I used to. I mean, I can still do all the work I used to. In fact, I can do more. I do it better. I find it easier to do the same stuff on a job site now than I did 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Get it going. It'll be out and about and up and at them. Absolutely. And you don't understand that until all of a sudden I just, I had to go see this. I went and seen the specialist just actually the other day about my hip. Cause I, uh, 
or muscle in the quad, uh, one one of the muscles there. But uh, geez, coming on two years ago in June at the ranch where branding ca- branding cabs, and one of the large ones ended up running and hitting me in the leg and snapped my leg right out sideways, and all oh, that hurt like a some bitch. And it just never healed. So I went and seen the specialist to see if they needed to. And he's like, well, we're going to give it, we'll, he says, you think just physio would heal up the muscle and still take it, but there's still a tear in the muscle that never healed. And then, and he's like, but it's so, it's so small that going in and doing surgery is like a needle in a haystack. And I'm like, well. I can still move around and everything. It's just painful. He's like, yeah, if, if it was arthritis, I'd just give you a new hip. Easy peasy. And I never thought I'd hear a doctor say that giving me a new hip would be easier than going in and sew, and sewing up the muscle. But wait and see. Try and decide. Because, yeah. Absolutely, Robert. Spirit is willing and the flesh is weak. And it feels like it happens overnight. We're all in that area now, but I swear to God that the very morning I turned 40 and woke up that day, my body turned around and said, hey, remember all that stupid crap you did when you were a teenager and in your early 20s and everyone said you would pay for it later? Guess what's going to start hurting from this day forward? Uh, I'm absolutely certain that there is a real clock on us and it's just you hit it, bam, you pay for it. Just like that. It's done. You know, I can hear people moving around here. And I've been trying to get my kid and getting her to come and sit down with me. So I can sit there and I can ask her and go, why the hell is Gen Z act this way? And she'll be like, well, why the hell is Gen X this way? She keeps saying, yeah, I'll do it. And then she's like, I forgot. I forgot. I'm doing my hair. I'm going to have a shower. I'm like, holy hell. Trying to get her to sit down and do a show with me is like trying to date back when I was a teenager. It's absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> you didn't want to leave a pretty corpse, eh? I, I tell you, I hope I'm as gracious going out as my old man was. I had been away working for like 10 years, I you know. Go west and find your fortune, my son. And I didn't. The one thing I didn't know it. And the one night I was working, then I got hurt and I I slipped and drove a knife through my hand. So I had to go to the hospital. And I'm in there. And it turns out that same night, my old man was in the emergency room. But I didn't find out until the next day. I had to go to the hospital. Turned out he'd gotten very sick real fast. Anyway, I went in to go see him and it was just, oh, it was probably about six hours before he passed away. He was ill. They said he wasn't conscious or anything, but this is real, a real Gen X kid conversation to their parent boy. And when I finally went in to go see him, he snapped to and he, he could talk. He was alert. He recognized me. He knew who I was to have a conversation. And the first words out of my mouth were, this man is laying there in the hospital and it's just a matter of hours before he's gone and I sat there and I looked right at him and I went well I guess asking you how it's going is kind of a moot point and he just laughed and he looked at me and he's like yeah well it's been one hell of a ride but I'm like I hope that when it's the last minute for me I can have that same attitude because I tell you that was great uh, <laughs> to me, that's a happy story. Other people are like, oh, that's so sad. I'm like, no, that was great. He wasn't sad. 
I wasn't sad. And our dynamic hadn't changed at all. And people are like, yeah, I hadn't seen him in 10 years. I'm like, no. And this is a man that once lived four houses down from me and I didn't see him for a year. Because he worked, I worked. I hated his new wife. Because, you know, well, I, honestly, I hated her because she was actually younger than me. By three months. In fact, at one point, we had gone to the same high school together. Well, just to be clear, I was already in my late 20s by then. But it was still weird. <laughs> no. Her name was Dot, which is almost just as bad. Like, who the hell names yourself after a mark on a page when you drop a pen? Dot. You know, I bet you every time she signed her name, people thought she was just putting a period at the end. It was horrible. Couldn't stand the woman. Oh, but it was it was wild. Well, I just hope that when that happens, and I am that beaten up and worn down and done for, that I sit up and be like, ha, it's been a trip. Peace, hobies. And drop dead. Just like that. That's how I want to go. I want to bolt up and go, it's been a trip. I'm out of here. And then just drop. If I can, that's it for me. That's the way I want. To me, that's that's going out Gen X style. You know, yeah. Shit, you know what? I think I gotta go. I think I gotta skydive again this summer. I think I gotta take that back up. Although I have to recertify because I haven't jumped in a few years. But it should be easy. Anybody else ever? I imagine there's a few people that have jumped if anybody's done some service. But, uh, anybody just jump for fun, entertainment? If you haven't, I recommend it. There's nothing more wild than standing there. <laughs> Yep. Nothing like standing there and throwing your ass out of an airplane. Oh, Tushner, is uh, there is nothing like it. And there are two types of people that do it. And this is what I learned, and it turned out I was one type and not the other. But there's two types. There's the people that do it and go, that was great, but I don't need to do it again. I'm glad I did it. It was fun, but I'm not doing it again. And then there's those that do it. And the second your feet hit the ground, all you want to do is grab another chute, jump in that plane and go straight back up. And that was me. I wanted to go straight back up and jump again, man. I loved it. It was amazing. There's nothing like sitting there and, you know, throwing your ass out of a plane 10,000 feet in the air. <laughs> Well, that kind of makes sense, Robert. <laughs> if you can fly a plane, you don't need to jump out. But there's there's nothing like it in the world. The only thing I really hate is when people ask, "Can you describe? Can you describe what it's like?" Oh, it's the ultimate rush. There is nothing more. When I jumped that first time, I I was amped up for a month minimum. Like, you could take the most. Uh, you'd have to make sure they pulled their chute, but you could take the most depressed person in the world and have them on a successful skydive and they'd probably be cured. There, there's nothing like it. When you sit there and you jump and you're at 10,000 feet and you're, and you're watching and you're free falling for over a mile before that chute, before you open the chute. I mean, that is just that, that 90, it's like 90 seconds feels like forever. You will never, ever get me bungee jumping, Jay. I think people that bungee jump are absolutely nuts. I, I, I can't do it. I look at it and I think they're crazy. And yet there are people that are bungee jumping 
you can't get to go skydiving. They will not go get a jump out of a plane, but they'll jump off a bridge or some high basket in a crane. And, you know, I, I can see why it's a rush, but it's over too quickly. I mean, skydiving, you at least got eight, 10 minutes because you got your roughly 75 to 90 seconds of free fall. And then you have, you know, depending on the wind and when you open your chute, you can have six to eight minutes of coming down in your chute. It's very nice. It's relaxing. You know, and of course, with the chutes now and the, the air rams, you, you can steer them. And when you do it just right, when you're stepping down on the ground, it's no different than stepping off the last step on a set of stairs. There's no hard hitting or nothing. If you do it right, if you do it wrong, you do like I did the one time and I messed up and my legs hit and they folded underneath me and I almost broke both my legs. Uh, but it didn't stop me because that was my own screw up. At the last second, I ended up turning away from the wind and I didn't flare in time and I crashed. But it was great. It's, there's nothing like it ever. It's an absolute rush. It's completely exhilarating. And it's very windy. I mean, you're, you're free falling. You know, it's nothing like it. And yet, I'm a nervous flyer. I get on an airline to go somewhere, and I'm, I'm nervous. I, I don't like it. I don't like being in a contained tube. I don't like not being in control of being able to get out when I want to. Yeah, I'd rather drive across country than fly. I'll, pl I'll, I'll plan it out to take the four days to drive instead of fly, because I'd rather be able to pull over and get out whenever I want. That and I, I love driving. I can drive. I can drive twelve hours straight without stopping if I didn't have to stop and put gas in. You know, cooler beside me with food and the drinks, and that's it. It's probably it, Robert. But you know, I've asked, and they will not let you take a parachute on as carry-on luggage. It has to go underneath. <laughs> you cannot you try and take a shoot as carry on and you are going to wind up with a bunch of rubber gloves up your butt and most likely from that point on end up on a no fly list if they're still doing that to people you don't hear as much about that anymore did they finally give up on that Or are they still putting four S's on people's boarding passes? You know. Yeah, I, I much rather drive. Driving is great. You get to see the scenery and go somewhere. No. Even traveling on passenger train is nice. You know, I, I don't get this flying. Which becomes a problem. Because if I want to go overseas, I've got to fly, but I'd much rather get on a ship. At least if I don't like it, I can get off. I mean, I might not like where I'm getting off because you're stuck in the middle of the ocean for four days. <laughs> that would be, Robert, you could say that, but he didn't take the shoots with him. He traded hostages for parachutes. But yeah, that is probably why. It's, it's absolutely crazy. You want to hear how crazy sometimes it is for taking carry-on luggage? I had one I was traveling and all I had was just a little backpack because I only had a couple changes of clothes and a laptop in it and that was it instead of a hard pack luggage. And there was an empty second backpack folded up inside it. And they tried to tell me I couldn't take the backpack as carry on luggage. And I said, but I'm not putting my laptop 
underneath. I'm not risking it getting broke or anything. They're like, oh no, you can take everything from your backpack with you, but you can't take the actual backpack bag. And, I, and I'm like, are you serious? And they're like, yeah, you can take everything else on. It's carry on, but you can't take the actual bag itself. And I think they figured they had me because you can't take the backpack and who's going to carry, you know, the two pairs of jeans and socks and shirt and underwear and go and stick it in the thing because, you know, pilot wouldn't allow that or whatever. So I opened up the backpack, pulled out the other backpack, unfolded it, stuffed everything in it and gave them the original one. They told me I can't take and they let me through. So I took my, my other backpack that I just transferred everything to and took that on the plane because they said I could have all the contents from inside, but I couldn't take the actual bag. Tax dollars at work, people. This is the education that these people get. You know, I, 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 I get it, but I could have everything that was in the bag, but I couldn't have the bag. Which made no sense. And since I actually had a second bag inside there, I just took that out, transferred everything to it, gave them the empty bag, which they actually put as checked luggage and I went and got on the plane. No problem. Nobody batted an eye. Nobody said a thing. So I, I got to tell you, I came to believe after that, that uh, they just randomly pick these people somewhere and say, Hey, you want a job? You want a job nobody else wants and we'll even let you be a dick to random people now and then and they can't say anything to you because they sure as hell aren't educated or properly trained they can't be now i'm sure there's the exception to the rule like there always is <laughs> but i would say for the most part they're dum-dums absolute dum-dums What else, you know? Gotta have a dum dum. And and yeah, the rules change and cro rules for crossing the border change too. Like I remember when crossing the one, you know, I used to go across all the time, drive up, go across, you know. <laughs> Agreed, Teshner, and yes, Robert, that's all it is. It's, if they really were worried about actual safety, every single person that worked in an airport would be highly trained to spot these things from the, the janitors to anybody that works any kiosk selling anything, you know, every single employee would be trained and certified to spot people if they really took it seriously. But, you know, we're all about show, right? Crime is really high in the subway, so I'm going to deploy 1,000 National Guard, but you can't have your guns. Hmm. <laughs> You know, oh, watch out, Teshner. That's kind of, that can be, uh, <laughs> now, yeah, sometimes you might know more than the adults around you and everybody younger always thinks they know more. <laughs> and yeah, way too many dum-dums in a position of power these days. That is for sure. I mean, you, you don't, you don't want to come across as a know-it-all these days, but it seems to me that, uh, a little forethought and just a smidge of common sense would really fix a lot of crap. It, it would fix a lot of it, you know, just a little bit because it, it's just too 
too absolutely crazy. Where is it? Oh. Ha <laughs> ha. Blacked myself out. I can't believe I just did that. I just pulled a dum-dum. See that? Black screen. I hit a button that I wasn't supposed to. Well, at least I didn't cancel the stream. Well, a lot of what people say oh, won't, won't work. Oh, I remember the pushback for video games. The, they're, they're violent. They're horrible. They, they make you dumber. They're no good for anything. And now they're used to train people. You know, if it wasn't for video games, you wouldn't have all the high-end simulators for training that you have these days. You wouldn't have, you know, I mean, shit. Everybody knows that, like, video gamers and stuff make the best drone pilots. Like, oh, yeah, video games are rot your brain. I mean... If you had one of the old TVs, literally too much screen time sitting too close could rot your brain because they did have a aura radiation that actually surrounded them. But that's not the case now. But they said that with video games all, all the time. And also, you go all the way back to our time, the only people that played video games were those that hung out arcades. And that was the, that was the underbelly of like the teenage world. You know, only bad kids and troubled kids hung out at arcades. Only troubled kids had a, a jean jacket or a leather jacket, you know. But shit. Yeah. Video games will rot your brain. Music makes you violent. Um... About using D and D for psychotherapy. Interesting, because I'm sure you all remember when they were trying to get it banned because that uh, guy and his friend killed his parents, and they blamed it on the game D and D. You remember that back when we were? Shit, we'd have most just about all of us would have been teenagers then. Robert, you might have been pushing about twenty by then, maybe. <laughs> Or 18. But you're, you, you... You remember that, though? They tried to get it banned because them two kids that were playing D&D. &D, and they, they ended up killing his parents. And they blamed the game. Yeah, and the pushback for the rock music, like we mentioned last week, all it did was it made it better and it made rap more popular. Yes, that was huge. They, they saw satanic cults everywhere at the time. They were everywhere. They even had congressional hearings about them. And yet, they've never, ever found one. They never discovered one, really. But yet, if you go into a few cities and actually walk down the street, you could actually walk right by the official, actual registered religion the church of satan but somehow that wasn't a panic issue yeah i remember the, the satanic panic when they they saw satanic cults everywhere you know they were that's probably where the idea with all the dead baby jokes came from because they kept talking the satanic thing and the cults and sacrificing babies and eating children and all just all sorts of weird to it. Like these people that were so righteous that were trying to hunt this stuff. I could not imagine what it was like living in their heads under that kind of paranoia. And, and these were the people that ran the country for years and some of them still do. Oh, it was absolutely. No wonder we're screwed up. No wonder nothing is the way it should be. No wonder it's all falling apart and you got a bunch of weirdos want to burn it down because somebody called them the wrong name. Oh my God. How 
dare you. I really don't care. I don't care who they are, who they want to be. Just leave me out of it. Why? Well, see, and I don't understand why. Damn hippies. I mean, I got nothing to get hippies, but I, I well, I just want to hit them all the time. I can't stand them. Bunch of sh shit between the toe, dirty people that never wash. They were against soap. Got into that hole I washed by scrubbing myself with stone. Like, get real. It, you know, and the worst part of that was, is my parents, for the longest time, lived like in the bush, in like a pine bow hut made of plastic, you know, until I was about to be born. Because while the old man made a living picking mushrooms, but shit. So they were kind of like hippies. But God, can't stand them. They need to be knocked upside the head more ways than one. Need to have a hippie toss. Hippie roundup. There's still a bunch out there. Problem is, most of them are professors in universities now. Uh-oh. Screwed that one up. It's too bad. Can't stand them. But enough about hippies. It's going to make my head hurt. I'll have nightmares. Some big, dirty, long-haired dude chasing me through the forest, going, come and love nature with me. Hell. Sends a shiver down my spine every time I think about it. What I tell you. Can't have crazy shit all week. Are we going to have actually a, a quiet week, or is everything still going to be nuts? I mean, they're ramping up and getting, going to get more loony now. I mean, I'm interested. I'm actually going to turn on the news on Monday and take a look and see just how messed up things got over the last couple days. Because when it comes to weird messed up stuff, okay, here's, I'm sitting here. I was sitting here yesterday, just minding my own business. A kid walks in and she says, what happened to Kate? I said, who's Kate? She's like, uh, Kate Middleton, wasn't that her name? And I said, are you talking about the woman that married Prince William? And she's like, yeah, she's missing. I'm like, she's not missing. She had surgery a few months ago. It's going to take several months to heal. But apparently there's all this weird stuff on the internet going about it. She's missing or she's dead or, or they got her locked away or all sorts of shit. I'm like, I don't care. It does not really affect my world. Tashner, you're right. Well, and it won't just be the presidential race. I probably guarantee that 99% of it will just be about Trump. Because it's going to get them the ratings. I mean, shit. I, I turn on the computer and I come into YouTube and probably one in every three videos that show up on my home screen is somebody talking about Trump. <laughs> yeah, see, Robert, I don't care. I'm like, I guess somebody wanted a conspiracy theory. Ah, uh, Teshner, they won't talk about the real economic problems. They'll talk about some fake economic problems. And, and the actual wars they'll talk about are the wars that uh, haven't happened yet, but they're going to say that are going to start and it because, you know, they're going to ramp that up. Because, you know, there's a couple new ones coming on the horizon. 
<laughs> That's right, Robert. It's the same, same thing as generations before us fought two wars, so I don't have to care about what other someone else's feelings are about some subject that has nothing to do with me. Then, Teshner, you are right. Morale is at an all-time low for the economics. However, it's not going to change. See, the crap with the whole economics crap is it's such a catch-22 situation. You know, things cost so much, people stop spending and start saving. And that benefits you. But then they talk about how all oh, the economy is shrinking and people are getting laid off because people aren't going out and spending their money. So everybody, go out and spend, 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 rack up your credit, get into big time debt so you can get that artificial boost in the economy again. And then everybody starts defaulting. And then you'll have more store chains going under. I mean, it's about time we have another major bank collapse, isn't it? Like a real major bank collapse. It, it, it should be right on that schedule. I mean, it's about every 15 years or so, is it not? Last one was 08, 09. So, yeah, yeah we should be there. It's probably going to happen this fall. Along with many other things that are going to make people go crazy, crack the noodles, beat the eggs and whoop some small ones in the place. <laughs> but what do you do? You sit back and enjoy the show, that's all. I'll hit that giant big red reset button and I'll sit back and I'll eat popcorn and watch the world collapse around me. Because it really wouldn't change my day to day. It, it it doesn't, and it probably most of us in reality, it probably does and was not really affect our day to day. We get up, we go to work, or we stay home, or we eat. Damn right, laugh while Rome burns. Play some good music. Get a big get a big stack of speakers and rock out while the power is still on. Play all the greats. All the best hard rock and heavy metal that ever was. I'd probably play a lot of Iron Maiden. Let everybody know. It's that time again. You know, maybe Ace is High. Uh, yeah, probably Ace is High. But it is coming on that time where I got to wind down. Go there, make my nighttime, sleepy time, tea, relax, and go to sleep. Get my four hours. I don't sleep very much. Never did. <laughs> that is such a good song, Robert. Hallowed be thy name. That is such a good song. <laughs> but I don't want to be waiting in my cold cell. When that bell begins to chime. <laughs> Absolutely not. But I definitely play that. I play that one while my own house burns. But I'm going to wander off, make my sleepy time tea, kick back, relax, have that nightly conversation where I have a sarcastic back and forth with the little woman before we both go to sleep. My God daughter laughs all the time and says you two have the strangest dynamic ever but she loves it it works everybody's got their own thing so everybody have a good night 
Thanks for coming and stopping by and dropping in. And we're all around. Oh, definitely going to have a good night. Always working on some more improvements. I will be back here next week. And oh, definitely going to be popping up some more videos. Going to have the finished end of that whole Gen X Constitution thing. I hope this week put out the full video. Reading that off. See what everybody thinks of it. Have a final draft before I get it printed. See if everybody... See what everybody else says about it. Have a Gen X vote here through the YouTube on it and see if we'll adopt it. But until then, everybody enjoy. Have a great week. And until next Saturday, most definitely stay safe.